Well, first of all, personal example, like when I first joined the anime club four years ago, I keep it as a total secret from my parents. And they didn't know that, know that I'm in the anime club until they accidentally find my, the anime club fan page and I was listed as one of the execs. Like, when did you become exec of anime club? And I have to do all the explanation. And so they, I only watch anime for, for casual relaxation from tasks or something like that. Well, I think there's always been a stigma against fandom to a certain extent. Um, the idea that, that someone is placing uh, emotional attachments onto a, a, a fictional product um, is always in some way looked down upon by mainstream culture, um, which is ironic because it's that same mainstream culture that makes money off of people buying products and people that buy products are fans. So it's, it's almost like a self-hatred in some way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's a, the, the geek culture has certainly been, um, kind of looked down upon and disparaged for uh, a number of years. I think that some aspects of that have to do with the ways that fandoms define themselves as groups, right? So that fandom or being a true fan establishes an inside or an outside. So to some extent that's on the, the general public that perceives fans as being fanatics that um, have their own kind of peculiar cultural rituals or ways of speaking or jargon or things like that. So in that case, some of it might be self-produced. Others of it have to do with the idea that being interested in a foreign culture, if you think about the United States as being, in general, still a very isolationist English-only kind of place. There's the idea that if you're interested in something else, then something must be wrong with you, right? That you're not American in some way because you're interested in, say, Japanese fiction or um, another language, right? Um, or another kind of cultural product that isn't necessarily a Hollywood or mainstream product. 